Digestion and Absorption of Dietary Proteins Introduction Protein digestion begins in the stomach by the action of gastric pepsins, which are released as proenzymes, pepsinogen 1 and 2, and undergo autoactivation at acidic pH. The amount of proteolysis achieved by gastric pepsins depends upon the composition of other dietary constituents, gastric motility, and pH. Amino acids released from gastric digestion play an important role in releasing cholecystokinin from duodenal and jejunal endocrine epithelial cells. Cholecystokinin is critical for stimulating the release of pancreatic enzymes responsible for the digestion of all three macronutrients. Digestion In the duodenum, several proteases act in combination to digest proteins into amino acids, or dipeptides and tripeptides. Like gastric pepsinogens, pancreatic enzymes are secreted as an active proenzymes, which are activated by hydrolysis of a peptide bond. Central to this process is enterokinase, which is released from the mycovillus membrane of duodenal absorptive cells by the action of bile salts. Enterokinase converts trypsinogen to trypsin, which then catalyzes the conversion of all other pancreatic proteases to their active forms as well as autocatalyzing the activation of additional trypsinogen. The end result is a mixture of single amino acids, dipeptides, and tripeptides. Absorption These are absorbed from the lumen via sodium-linked transporters or a hydrogen-linked transporter. Individual amino acids are carried by the sodium-linked transporter, which directly absorbs three single amino acids along with one sodium ion, which uses one ATP molecule. This step is passive, but is called secondary active transport, since the energy is indirectly provided by the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. PEPT1, however, only absorbs dipeptides and tripeptides, along with one hydrogen ion, and is considered proton-dependent. Inside the enterocyte, these dipeptides and tripeptides are shuttled to lysosomes, where they are further digested to single amino acids. This is considered indirect absorption of amino acids because larger peptides were originally absorbed. All single amino acids are absorbed into the interstitial space via basolateral transporters that are specific to each amino acid. From here, they're transported into the portal circulation. If any one of the basolateral transporters had a defect, a biochemical deficit from the inability to absorb that specific amino acid would be the likely result. Protein malabsorption. Impaired digestion and absorption of dietary protein occurs when pancreatic bicarbonate and protease secretion and or activity is impaired, as in chronic pancreatitis or cystic fibrosis. Protein malabsorption can also occur in diseases associated with a generalized reduction of the intestinal absorptive surface.